Welcome to Musician Profile, Celebrating Racial Diversity. This is Ixlam's monthly series of short videos to feature orchestra musicians of color. I'm Stephen Lafer. I'm a horn player in the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra and Ixlam alternate delegate for the RPO. This month, we're chatting with Elisha Nelson, a member of the Cleveland Orchestra Viola section since the orchestra's 2000-2001 season. Hailing originally from Alaska, pretty darn far, Alicia joined the Young Artists Program at the Cleveland Institute of Music, from which she also got her bachelor's and master's degrees. On top of that, she also holds an artist diploma from the Royal Academy of Music in London, and she's the first alumnus of the Cleveland Orchestra Youth Orchestra to be appointed a member of the Cleveland Orchestra. Alicia, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Let's get right to our question, shall we? Sure. Do you recall the first time that you heard an orchestra, and can you tell us about it? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so I'm from the interior of Alaska, near the Fairbanks area, is where I grew up. And we had sort of a community orchestra, the Fairbanks Symphony Orchestra, that performs monthly. So that was sort of the big outing for our family, was to go to those monthly shows that they, that they had. Uh, but I would say the big uh, introduction to orchestral music and playing was the public library. That's where I learned of um, all these great, you know, soloists of like Isaac Stern, Itzhak Perlman, Midori, um, Oistrakh, all the greats. Um, I I heard their their LPs back in the day, and uh, that was the the big introduction to orchestral music and to you know the violin repertoire. I was a violinist back then. Mm -hmm. uh, the solo uh, violin repertoire that I was playing. So what led you from the violin to the viola? Ah, uh, um, it's kind of funny. I came to the viola rather late. I was in my early 20s and, you know, I had gone to the Cleveland Institute of Music, uh, gotten, gotten my bachelor's in violin. My Fulbright grant <laughs> at the Royal Academy of Music was in violin. And then I came, I came back after that and I was like, I'm sort of interested in this inner voice thing. Let me, uh, let me delve into that. And to the chagrin of my parents, I uh, started <laughs> my master's in viola performance. They were very confused and not very excited by that. Um, yes, and then did my, yes, learn viola and it's been viola ever since. I really love the rich inner voice and to me, the, the great power that has to shape music. Um, I think that's why I really love the viola so much. Sure. Interesting. I mean, coming from the point of view of a brass player, that you can swap over as late as your master's degree from violin to viola. That's I find that really intriguing. Um, it's it can be done. I mean, it's maybe le less common. I I think a lot of violas tend to switch in their teens if they're switching from violin to viola. But yeah, I mean, it works whenever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, as long as you enjoy what you're doing. Was was there a particular moment or experience during all of this that you knew you wanted to do this professionally? Not for me. I didn't really have that aha moment of thinking, oh, I want to be in this orchestra. Or I want to be in an orchestra. I just knew I wanted to be a musician. And um, after I switched from violin to viola, I kind of knew what my options were for a career. It would be, you know, either teaching or most likely being in an orchestra, uh, trying to find a chamber music group. That's really, really hard to find personalities that work well together and, mm. and to also do that lifestyle. So yeah, it's um, after, and also in, in my master's, I studied with the legendary Robert Vernon, uh, who was the principal violist of the Cleveland Orchestra. And um, yeah, so of course with him, it was, excerpts and you know learning you know learning the repertoire the orchestral repertoire sure yeah so two decades in the cleveland orchestra that's a fairly long time and i'm sure you don't remember every single concert that you played but um is there any particular one that really sticks in your mind something you'll always remember yeah a few performances so our music director franz Velzermust is known for his operatic work and um I really loved the like the first time we did Electra. Uh, 
that was just mind blowing. And uh, the cunning little vixen, I, I I just loved what he did with that and and learning all that repertoire. Sort of a, a fun nerdy fact about me: when I was in the Young Artist Program, what I would do for fun uh, during the weekends was go to the library and listen to you know listen to operas hmm. and then I had like this little notebook and I would write down the synopsis <laughs> so it was it's been fun to kind of revisit these pieces as a professional really playing them and and uh yeah going back to to this music that I really love to to listen to you're Even right. though I hate the storylines, but it, the music is phenomenal. <laughs> <You're laughs> right. Well, Electra is no joke. I, I spent some time in an opera orchestra and I played Electra, and that's still the single most difficult piece of music I've ever encountered. I've never played anything harder than that. Uh, yeah, it's a great, great piece. Yeah, and I'm one right. other thing, I, I also loved um, doing The Rite of Spring with Pierre, Pierre Boulez. Mm. It was one of my very first years in the orchestra. So I had played it, you know, as in, in my college orchestra and thought I really had a good work understanding and uh, of how the piece went and what it meant. But learning it with, or, you know, having the rehearsals with him, it just opened like a whole new universe to the piece and I thought wow it's, it was really spectacular to have that experience oh that's great so changing tracks completely if today's Alicia could give a piece of advice to your younger self sitting in a practice room 30 years ago what would that be ah uh, so many bits of advice <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important one would be Ah, uh, perfectionism diminishes creativity. Ah, good one. This, um, we're in this age of, you know, electronics, and I love doing stuff with electronics, and it's fun, but we have this idea of what the perfect concert, you know, perfect intonation, you know, you have to play your excerpts perfectly, and it can kill the music making. I mean, we're supposed to be playing these instruments, not working these instruments and telling stories and and touching people and communicating. Uh, so, yeah, it's it, it, for me especially, it was easy to kind of get into that perfectionism mindset where kind of, you know, makes it not so much fun. And uh, yeah. So definitely that that would be my the, the thing I would tell myself. Let my hair down. <laughs> <laughs> Sage advice. By the way, I'm digging your wallpaper in your practice room. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to concentrate with that around me, but I really like it. I'd like to have a busy, like really sort of intense practice area. This is a very small room. Okay. Um, yeah, I like to have a lot of stuff around. Sure. <laughs> All right. Final question. Why do you think a series like this might be especially important right now? And and what would you what would you say to being viewed as as a kind of role model to other young black musicians who want to get into a symphony orchestra? Yeah, well, there are lots of reasons I'm sure people would come to a series like this. Um, I think, you know, the, the orchestral field uh, over the past several years is you know, sort of had been more interested in diversity and more interested in, you know, in all aspects of it, you know, getting people in the audience to be more representative of their communities, uh, various, you know, genders, ethnicities. It's it's not just sort of like a, a black thing or a white thing. Uh, but I think, you know, getting a, a sort of a cursory look at other people um, in the industry is helpful in seeing more how we're similar. And, you know, for all of us to get to, to get into an orchestra, we all have to sort of play at a certain high level. Yeah. We all have to have, you know, access to great teachers. We have to have access to um, instruments. We have to have time to practice. We have to, you know, uh, have these connections to, um, you know, great instruments. We have to have the support of, of a mentor or parents in order to, in order to learn and have these experiences. So when you look at it, 
it's, you know, all these like a, a bundle of things that kind of come together that all of us have to have. And the trick is getting it so that more people have access to these things so that more people can be involved and participate. And I think that will make for a much richer community, a much richer uh, classical music world. And mm -hmm. so you know, to me, the, that's sort of what it boils down to. I think um, hopefully that's that's what would inspire someone to to see you know to to have a listen and and see the peoples who who are different from them and uh, see how we're all pretty similar. We all have the same right. needs. Sure. Or in the case of a young black musician, maybe see somebody on the stage who looks like them. That too. And it's interesting because, you know, growing up in Alaska, <laughs> well, there weren't that many people, but there certainly weren't that many Black people. So I kind of didn't really have role models who were successful, professional Black musicians. Uh, there were other Black kids who played, uh, but yeah, no professionals. So um, I think people get their inspiration where they get it. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone is going to have that person who really represents them, but I mean, we're all human. Hopefully we can find things in, in each other to, uh, as inspiration. As well, well said, well said. Anything else you'd like to share that you'd like Exxon listeners to know about you? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we can leave it right here. <laughs> that wraps it up for us. Thank you so much, Alicia. We appreciate you sitting down with us and letting Exxon listeners know a little bit more about you. My pleasure. Thank you for your time. All right. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.